Hello everybody, my name is Dave Redman and I chose self-assessment for my blog post today. Uh, it took me a while to get some resources. I used Google Scholar to search for them and I finally, after going through a lot of abstracts, found a couple of papers that I actually had access to and they ended up being very good, particularly the ones written by Gavin T.L. Brown uh, were really, really good in helping decide how to implement this into your classroom. I had a article written by him as well as a presentation that he gave in Sweden and both were of course uh, along the same lines and really helped to kind of get a good idea of how to use this in your classroom and when it is and isn't appropriate actually. Uh, I think with the time frame it's good to stick to the main key points um, so I'm going to talk about their stuff and what they said kind of and then um, how I implement that or my reactions to that as well. So the three main points basically are the fact that student self-assessment generally has a positive impact but it isn't the end-all be-all. Uh, there are some problems with validity and reliability. Um, second is that it's really good for self-regulation of learning. Um, so a lot of the behavioral type of stuff, self-assessment tends to be really good for that. And third is that just like anything else you implement in your classroom, it needs to have a curricular framework to really work well. So on to that first point. Um, their point, more or less, was that while student self-assessment has a positive impact on academic performance, there's a lot of problems with validity and reliability. Um, they mentioned the, that students aren't always truthful in self-assessment and while we all know that most students tend to rise to the occasion in this kind of thing, there are some students who don't. And my takeaway from that is that self-assessment is not a good way to formally assess students because it isn't fair if not all students are uh, being truthful and carrying themselves to the same standards. So it's a great way for kids to kind of get an idea of where they are or to reflect, but it isn't really good for that formative final assessment that you're going to use. Second, uh, student self-assessment is an important aspect and a contributor to self-regulation of learning. I went on to define what they def how they define self-regulation of learning, and that is it is self-directive and self-generated metacognitive, metacognitive excuse me there motivational and behavioral processes through which individuals transform personal abilities into control of outcomes in a variety of contexts. Basically, it's a really good way to develop and reinforce the behavioral side of the students. Um, one way that Lincoln School is taking off with that is we're actually using a new um, self-assessment policy for our uh, for our behavior grades. And so the students come in and they actually fill out a form towards the end of the year. And they're given it at the beginning of the year as well so that they know how to track themselves and where they should be. But it allows them to really reflect on how they've acted throughout your class and We've found that most of the time they are pretty truthful with this kind of stuff. They're normally pretty spot on and oftentimes harder on themselves than we would be. This is a great place to use self-reflection in the classroom. And finally, student self-assessment really needs a curricular framework to ensure that it's effective. Similar to any other form of assessment, we need to make sure that we scaffold this this whole process so that students become competent at this skill. Just like test taking or giving presentations or any other way that we would use to assess students, we need to make sure that they're capable and have the skills to do this. You can't always expect students to just come out and be able to do this right away even in the secondary level. Uh, so you need to make sure if you put this into your classroom that students are scaffolded in how they do it so that they're shown how to do it. I think that that's a really important piece to this or else it just won't really stick the way you want it to. Those were the key three points and 
I like using this in my own classroom. I've written a couple of posts about how I have students uh, look back over tests, and I think self-assessment is a good way to get students thinking, but it's important to remember that it does have limitations and that it might not be a good choice to use for those formative assessments. Thank you. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your master's class.